This statue commemorates the glory of the Pony Express, which started here at 2.45 a.m. on April 4th, 1860, when Sam Hamilton galloped into a blinding rainstorm on the first lap of the 1,966-mile trip to St. Joseph, Missouri. During its 18-month existence, its 121 riders and its 500 ponies carried 35,000 pieces of mail with the loss of but one pouch. This venture, founded by Russell Majors and Waddell, ended California's isolation from the rest of the Union. But what was the Pony Express? Why is the statue even here? And why haven't more people heard about the Pony Express, even though it's an important part of our city of Sacramento's history? Today, we're going to walk you through the importance, the impact, and the legacy of the Pony Express. But before all of that, what even was the Pony Express? The Pony Express was a mail delivery service that ran between St. Joseph's, Missouri and Sacramento, California. The Express tried to maintain the fastest speed possible they could with their delivery horses. They did this by having riders switch to fresh horses roughly every 10 to 12 miles at each of the 184 Pony Express stations along the approximately 1,900 mile route whereas riders would be replaced every 75 to 100 miles. Notably, similar relay systems were also used in the past, such as in places like the Mongol Empire and the Persian Empire. The American Pony Express averaged a delivery time of about 10 days, with the fastest recorded ride taking 7 days and 17 hours. Particularly, this ride contained President Abraham Lincoln's 1861 inaugural address. Lastly, the initial cost to send a half-ounce letter was $5, with that price dropping to just $1 by the end of the Express's lifespan. The Pony Express was the first semi-efficient transcontinental mail delivery system in U.S. history. Its efficiency and speed at the time were legendary. Its trailblazing roots still echo throughout the history of American communications today. America was expanding west. With the acquisition of new states like Texas, California, and New Mexico, among others, transcontinental communication needed to be revamped to accommodate a quickly growing nation. But how would communication, mail, delivery in particular, be revamped to connect the eastern states with their younger western siblings? Attempts were made, although they are hopelessly inefficient. First, the mail would be delivered via river to St. Louis or Memphis. Then, a stagecoach took it to Fort Smith, Arkansas, finally trudging through vapid desert roads to the west. Or, mail was taken all the way down below South America and all the way back up to San Francisco. Either way, coast-to-coast -coast delivery took a grand total of three weeks. Three weeks to deliver letters, newspapers, important documents, basically the lifeblood of communication in 19th century America. That is, until a shrewd frontier entrepreneur pitched a delivery system which could deliver the nation's mail in a mere 10 days. Businessman William Russell was a frontier magnate who had already created a highly profitable cargo route serving military outposts from Missouri to Santa Fe, New Mexico by 1850. As his stardom grew, he found a business partner in William Waddell, a fellow frontiersman who also created several lucrative business ventures such as a successful store in Lexington, Missouri. By 1854, they received a third member in Alexander Majors, a frontier freighter who led several successful supply runs along the Santa Fe Trail. These three men would go on to form their own freighting company to serve the growing military presence in the West, which ultimately would netted them enough profit and experience to create the Pony Express. In three months following January of 1860, Russell, Majors, and Waddell created the Pony Express route. Starting at the eastern terminus in St. Joseph, Missouri, it followed the route of the Old Oregon Trail to its western terminus in San Francisco, California. With virtually no government support, a 10-day long trip was scheduled along the infant mail line. But no coach, wagon, or train would make the quick journey across mountains, deserts, and changing time zones. Only a horse and a teenage boy would take on the gargantuan landscape to deliver the nation's most precious cargo. Throughout its history, about 200 young men were hired as riders for the Express. These men would go down in history as vessels for the essence of American communication, albeit for a short time. The young men were expected to have mastery over horse riding. 
yet also have the stamina and mental fortitude to brave volatile weather and terrain as well as hostile natives. They dance with death on several occasions, without stopping once on the respective legs of the rally. And these men were no hardy mountain men. These were young, skinny, and poor teenagers, like Johnny Fry, the Cliff Brothers, and Johnson Richardson against the whole American frontier. Along with braving the terrain, the riders also needed perfect coordination, timing, and no shortage of improvisation to deliver their cargo to the next stop in the most efficient way possible. And so, after three months of grueling development, hiring of these wiry, skinny orphans, and planning of the road, the first ride was about to begin. Warren Epson was tasked with going to the Sierra Nevada through thick snow, an ominous pairing for a fast traveling mountain run. Epson needed a lot of assistance just to get through the snow, and even then, he had a mountain to climb, literally. The storm got worse, and hail started to fall, but the Pony Express would not be delayed, and Epson powered through what would become the hardest and most fearful part of the Express Trail. Russell made good on his promise. His mail service managed to travel 1,900 miles in just 10 days. The Pony Express was an outstanding success. However, over the span of just 18 months, an indelible part of American history would simply vanish. Indeed it did. Financial issues plagued William Russell and his company, eventually causing him to seek illegal bonds which landed him in jail. Majors and Waddell would phase out with their former partner, while the Express itself would meet its end with the invention and implementation of the telegraph. However, the Old Pony Express route was used to set up the first transcontinental telegraph lines in 1861, right before the start of the Civil War, the bloodiest war in American history which cleaved the nation in two and has led to history-altering ramifications in the decades and centuries that have followed. The first ever telegraph along the new line would be an offer of help from California to support the Union in the Civil War, strengthening the bond formed between the West and the rest of America, a bond that was forged initially by the Pony Express. The old route also served as the blueprint for the first transcontinental railroad, a bastion of communications in American history and an icon of said history. And above all else, the Express stood tall as an example of American heroism, adventure, and inspiration for the nation and its citizens. As the California newspaper Pacific wrote, no pampered and world-famed racer of the turf will ever win from you the proud fame of the fleet coercer of the continent. You came to us with tidings that made your feet beautiful on the tops of mountains. Tidings of the world's great life of nations rising for liberty and winning the day of battles, and nations' defeats and reverses. We have looked to you as those who wait for the morning, and how seldom did you fail us. In the end, the Pony Express remains a pioneering and important part of the history of American communication. Despite its 18-month lifespan, its subtle yet undeniably important mark should not be overlooked. Neither should the people behind the operation. The Pony Express is and will forever be a monument to American communication and American ingenuity. 